Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kai. I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about genetics. The topic for the day is going to be sex-linked genes, and I think this is the third time I've tried to make this video, so hopefully third time is going to be a charm. By the end of this video, these are the things that I need you to know or be able to do. So first of all, you should be able to understand sex determination in humans, so what determines if, a, if the baby is going to be a guy or a girl. Describe the inheritance and expression of sex-linked disorders. And finally, explain the concept of a bar body. So that's what we need to talk about. Let's go ahead and start going. First thing, is it a boy? Is it a girl? What's it going to be? For centuries and centuries and centuries, husbands used to get upset at their wives if they weren't having baby boys. Funny thing is, it's actually the dad who determines the sex of a baby. Now, let's look at it this way in terms of meiosis. So we know that genotypically speaking, a girl has two X chromosomes, which is the big chromosome right here. Guys have got an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, this stumpy little thing right there. So when women make gametes, eggs, each egg that is made gets an X. So this means that women can only contribute X's to the mix. When guys make sperm, 50% of our sperm get X's, 50% of our sperm get Y's. So this means that it is actually the dad that contributes the Y that will determine whether a baby is a boy or not. So have that in your head, know that it is the gametes from the dad that determines whether it is a boy or a girl and know that a guy is XY and a girl is XX. Now, technically speaking, the thing that actually determines whether a baby is going to be a boy or a girl. We got our two sex chromosomes here. A couple things to note on this diagram. This pink represents the parts of the chromosomes that are homologous. Now we talked about mitosis and we talked about meiosis and in many stages of mitosis and meiosis, those chromosomes have to behave homologously, meaning that they need to stick together, they need to line up properly, or they need to separate. So these regions on the end of the X and Y make sure that those chromosomes do behave like homologous chromosomes. But unlike other chromosomes, the normal chromosome, they are identical as far as the genes that they have down the entire length of the chromosome. These guys are only identical at the ends. In the middle right here, it is a completely different ball game. In this genetic material on the male Y chromosome, there is a gene called the SRY gene. That gene is the gene that produces all of, or contains all of the instructions that cause the body to produce things like testes and testosterone and all the special chemicals and parts that make a guy a guy. Now, when an embryo is developing, first few weeks it is sexually generic it's neither guy nor girl it is only at the time that this sry gene turns on that the baby will end up turning into a boy or developing further into a boy if that sry gene never turns on then the baby will continue to develop into a girl so you could say that girl is like the natural pathway that's the way the fetus is going to go unless this sry gene is present to turn on as far as expression of X-linked genes, now that an X-linked gene or a sex-linked gene is a gene that is carried specifically on one chromosome or the other. Yes, the chromosomes have got genes to determine your sex and all of the characteristic genes for other things on them. And we need to look at something real quick with regard to genetics. So our X chromosomes are big old chromosomes. So this would be the genotype for a girl. We got one X chromosome two X chromosomes. For a guy, we have got the X and we've got the short little stumpy Y. So let's imagine that we have got a gene that resides right here on the X chromosome. For a girl, if she has an A and an A, then she's going to exhibit the dominant phenotype. If she has an A or a little a, she's going to exhibit the dominant phenotype. If she has a little a, little a, she will exhibit the recessive phenotype. And that's because you've got two genes or two alleles and one can dominate over the other. With guys, 
we have one chance, and it's a 50-50 shot. If we get a big A, we exhibit the dominant phenotype. If we get the little a, we exhibit the recessive phenotype because there is no second allele to mask or cover or dominate over this one. So rather than having the chance to get a cover up, we've got one shot at it, which may not be a bad thing, but in some cases it can be problematic. Let's talk about some of those cases. So there are several sex-linked disorders, which are disorders that come from a gene that is carried on the X chromosome. There are three that I'm going to talk about in specific or in particular. And the first one we're going to look at is Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a disorder of the nervous system. So women have got the X chromosome that carries this gene on it. Ladies, if you are almost, I guess, dominant, you are healthy. If you are heterozygous, you are healthy, but you are a carrier. Only if you are homozygous recessive do you get the disease. And this, obviously, statistically speaking, is a very rare occurrence. Guys, 50-50. If you get the big A, you are healthy. If you get the little A, you have muscular dystrophy. So this means that if your dad's healthy, your dad has got the big A allele. If your mom is healthy, she is either homozygous dominant, in which case you will never have a chance of, or your parents could not possibly produce a kid with muscular dystrophy. However, if mom has got the trait, she is a carrier, but dad is healthy, then the kids have got a 50-50 shot of whether they are going to get it or not. And obviously, because any daughters produced, we get two X's, they'd probably be okay. But any guys produced, that X chromosome is going to come from mom, so it's very likely that a boy could get it. Now, recognize with sex-linked disorders, they are generally going to be passed from mother to son. It is possible for daughters to get them, but it's much more likely to go mother to son. Two other sex-linked disorders to be aware of. One is hemophilia, where your blood does not clot properly. And again, that is sex-linked disorder carried on the X chromosome. So generally, mothers pass that along to their sons. And there's color blindness. That little picture on the right, if you have proper color vision, you'll be able to recognize it. Off on the right-hand side, there is a partial circle in like a reddish-brown color. And there, on the left-hand side, there is a yellow square. If you have color blindness, you would not be able to see one or both of those shapes. Again, color blindness is a sex-linked disorder carried on the X chromosome. So guys are most likely to get it and it is passed from mother to son. Last topic for the day is an interesting topic called in X inactivation. So mothers, obviously, as gametes are being made, they will give one X to a daughter. Father, if it is a daughter, will provide another X. That girl that is being born, that is growing up, does not need two sets of X chromosomes working, producing products that are going to be used in the body. Only one of them is needed. So what happens, and this is a random occurrence, with the two X chromosomes in each cell of the body, one of the X chromosomes is inactivated and it condenses into a hard little clump called a bar body. You can see it in the micrograph. It's kind of out on the side of the nucleus there. Now, this is not like this isn't a strange occurrence. This is the way things normally are. Whichever X chromosome does not crumple up is the one that will be expressed. Now, this can provide or this can cause an interesting situation called mosaicism, where some cells express one set of genes giving one phenotype and other cells produce another set of genes giving a different phenotype. In cats, this is really easy to see. If you've got like a tortoise shell or a calico cat where it's got like a mottled orange, brown, or yellow, black um, coloring, the cells that are exhibiting the black color would have one X chromosome expressing. Those that exhibit a white or an orange color would have the other X chromosome activated. In humans, there's a disorder where some women, some of their skin cells will have sweat glands, others will not. So one chromosome turned on provides the instructions for the skin to have sweat glands, other chromosome does not. So it's possible that over the body there would be patches that would have sweat glands and patches that would not have sweat glands. I think third time was a charm. I hope you got all that. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and we'll see you again.